Hello and welcome to the Big Orbit Cards unboxing of a Magic Origins Fat Pack. So this is the latest Magic Releases Fat Pack. My name is Simon. I'll be opening this box today. So I want to dig into it. So Fat Packs come out with every release. They're limited to just the release. Um, they're a nice way to get hold of some boosters because you get nine boosters nine boosters in there from the set. You also get the nice storage box, some little deck boxes to put cards in. You also get a spin down counter and what a basic land and what I think is the most interesting bit which is a player's guide. So let's dig in. So we have that. So there's quite a bit of cardboard in here. So let's just get everything out first. So we'll open that up. So we have the first pack of boosters with your spin down dice. We've got one of the green ones as one of each colour. And then you get two deck boxes. So there you go, that's everything opened up. So you've got the player's guide, your two individual bo deck boxes, your pack of land with the boosters, your other set of boosters with your spin down dice and a good sturdy solid storage box which most people use to keep their cards and collections in um, so let's take a look through so we'll come back to the bases in a minute what I think is the most interesting part of the fat pack is the player's guide so this is a nice uh, nice booklet with that uh, oh, pre-cut holes in it so you can put it in a ring binder useful if you're intending to collect the whole set so as you, has here, uh, as you can see here it explains the story of the set um, this little foreword here is by Sean Main and Sam Stoddard who were the design and development leads for this set and they just explain you know, what they put into the set, why they felt they did the things that they did uh, and it's nice to hear from the people who are creating the game you love so much and then it goes on to explain the new mechanics, Renown and Spell Mastery. And then uh, says about how this is a new beginning, a new set. So, and then we get on to the fluff, the stories, so the multiverse, the planeswalkers, the power of the five colours of mana. Then we have an individual story for each character. So we have Gideon's story, Lily, oh, Jace's story. Lily's story, Chandra's, Nissa's, and then we go on to the 10 coolest Magic Origin cards. So the developers and designers have picked 10 of their favourite cards from the set that they think are the most impressive, um, be it because of their individually or what they show that the set's capable of. So. You know, the double faced planeswalkers is under one category. Uh, Goblin Pile Driver reprint is there. Um, and again, point out things like the Hangerback Walker, which just shows off part of the story, part of Nissa's homeworld. So, interesting cards. Then it goes on to explain Magic Jewels, which is the, um, the Xbox One, iPad, Steam, and PlayStation 4 game. Uh, and then some advice on building your own deck. And then. For the collectors, we have here every card from the set shown in pitch form. So, for new players and even experienced players, this is a good way to see at a glance every card in the set in your hand without having to use your phone or go online, filtering through pictures and getting stuff. It's just all here, printed out nice and neat for you. So, everything's in number order, which is also manual. Uh, color order, even shows you the different artworks of the basic lands and there we go and it points out that um, numbers 273 and higher which aren't pictured come in supplemental products so those are available in the deck builders toolkit and the sample decks uh, they're just reprints but they're classic cards and there we go, and then just an advert for Friday Night Magic, which we run here at the store every week and is available at your local stores. Just check out on the wizards.com forward slash FNM to find out about that. So that's the player's guide, which like I said is my favourite bit. I love sitting and reading through all of the stories. But 
let's have a look at these boosters then. So you get nine boosters in total in here and a big wad of land from the set. Everyone always needs land. You also get spin down, it'll be one of the five colours. Uh, same as what if you played at, is the same as the one from the pre release. So, spin down counter with the set symbol on there. And a little rules reference. So, let's crack through some packs. Let's see how what we've got in our backpack box. So going through these, some nice, uh, nice commons there. And then for uncommon, we've got a majoring network, shadows of the past, and Thralling Victor. Oh, and our first card, Gaia's Revenge. So this is a reprint uh, from older set. It's a very powerful card. Um, it's seven to cast, but pardon me, it's an eight-five. That can't be counted, has haste, and it can't be targeted by non-green spells or abilities from non-green sources. So it's just a big beast that when it hits the field will make an impact in that game you're playing. Guaranteed. <laughs> that was a nice first pull. Definitely look at building a green deck from this already. So let's go through these ones. Blazing Ho Hound, Skyrick Giant, Anchor to the Aether, and we have a Molten Vortex. So it's a red enchantment that allows you to pay and discard a land to deal two damage to a creature or player. It's not a fantastic one, but then it's, it is useful if you have got a hand clumped full of land cards. At least you can turn them into damage. So let's give it through the commons because a lot of the comment there are a lot of comments, and I don't want to make this video three hours long. Um, Ooh, Ember Moore Hellion. So he's a trampler. And your red sources increase their damage output by one. So for example, if you had him in play, Molten Vortex would deal three damage to creatures or players. Nice little combo, I guess. So go through here. So, mode of investigation, first bag Marauder, Shaman of the Pack, and we have a Relic Seeker, oh, and a Foil hiding behind there. So, Kithian's Tactics, one of the cards showing the history of Gideon, Kithian. Um, and we also have the Relic Seeker, which is a nice um, card for sort of like white weenie decks. When it becomes renowned, it searches your deck for an equipment card. Saw that a lot of pre release. Acolyte and Inferno, Nara Trapper, Twin Ends Elite, and the Abbot of Carol Keep. So we've seen quite a few red uh, red rares in this this boost box. Oh, sorry, Fat Pack. So it's a prowess, ends as a battlefield, um, X on the top card of your library, and you can play that card until your turn, until the end of turn. It seems like red's sort of like, uh, the, I believe it's called the Chandra ability, but it's red's temporary draw ability. Again, down through to the uncommons, Elemental Bond, Consecrated by Blood, Somber Ward Offer. Ooh, and we got a Jace. And his proxy card to go with him if you want to play him in normal decks. Because of him being double faced, you also get a proxy card with a normal back. So you just mark on which Planeswalker it is on there. So, Jace is tap to draw a card, then discard a card, but if you have five or more cards in the graveyard, you can flip him over from his 0-2 into Jace the Telepath Unbound, which is when he became Planeswalker. Uh, he starts at five loyalty, and his plus one can ta um, plus one gives a target creature minus two till your next turn. For minus three, he can cast an instant sorcery from the graveyard, but it then gets exiled instead of going to the grave afterwards. Or you can get an emblem with whenever you cast a spell, target opponent mills top five cards in the library. 
So, very nice card to get in there, Jace. So that's two mythics we've had from this fat pack so far. This has been good value. So, down to Psychic Rebuttal, Conclave Naturalists, Enthralling Victor, I see another foil. Oh, we've had Jace's Sanctum and the Sentinel of the Eternal Watch. Very good for limited play Sentinel. And we've had here Jace's Sanctum. So instance and sorcery you cast cost one less. And whenever you cast an instant or sorcery, try one. So fits in with the theme of the blue the blue deck, the four drop enchantment, so here we go, through these. Seismic Elemental, Foundry the Console, good for making those sculptors, Jesse and Thief, and Erebus's Titans. Oh, and Foil Mountain. Yay, Foil Mountain. So that's our third mythic from this fat pack. Uh, so it's a, um, it's a four drop, five five, as long as your opponents control no creatures, it's indestructible. And whenever a creature card leaves an opponent's graveyard, you can discard a card to return Erebus's Titan from your graveyard to your hand. So you can even get him back, even if they do manage to kill him. Very nice. And it's the Titan, I believe, Kithian kills in the story, so it all fits in. And then our last pack, boost pack from this box. Clash of Wills. Eye Black Massacre, a Revenant, and Hallowed Moonlight. So, it's an instant, white instant, and until end of turn, if a creature would enter the battlefield and it wasn't cast exile, it instead draw a card. So, overall, got a nice mixture of cards, a few mythics in there, which is always good to have. Um, you could easily, just using this as a limited pool by itself, very easily make up some cool decks. Um, yeah, I recommend Fat Packs to anyone who's looking at buying more than a handful of boosters, because you get the nice player's guide in there. Um, it's a nice player's guide, you get a boost full of boosting of land for your collection, which you'd be surprised that time when you run out <laughs> and it seems you get quite a nice rarity uh, of mythics there's also one other nice thing which if you've been collecting lots of um, fat packs now if you're a bit more careful than I'm going to be this works a lot better but I'm just going to pull this straight down here just to show you but each of the fat packs opens up into a nice little poster so this one is of Jace just as he transforms, so there's the poster boy there. Um, and this just makes something nice to collect. Uh, all the fat packs with this style have been have had these on the inside, so if you're collecting them, just makes for a nice little piece to add to the collection. And that's what magic's half of what magic's about, collecting. <laughs> and there we have it. That is the Magic Origins fat pack. I'd always recommend these to any player. Grab a hold of them on release. They are limited, so you can only get these on release of a set. Um, but yeah, they're always great value, they seem. So there you go. That is an unboxing for a Magic Origins fat pack. Remember, everything you've seen here today, you can buy and sell on our website, bigorbycards.co.uk. Uh, remember to like and subscribe to our channel to see more videos. I'll be doing more Magic Origins unboxings later. Um, and yeah, I hope you've enjoyed watching. My name's Simon. Bye.